All right, Instagram question. Where do you draft Tyler Higby next year? He signed a four-year contract extension in September. Everett's contract uh, is through 2020. Higby is so interesting, man. Do you believe that it was a real small sample size, but they completely changed the offense for those, what was it, four or five games? Five at, games. Five games at the end of the year. And it wasn't just that Higby went off, and, and he was incredible for fantasy football. He was a production monster at the tight end position. Like, the team was better. Jared Goff was way better. Todd Gurley in the running game was better when they made this switch. So that has me leaning to that Tyler Higby could be the real deal. Now, where would you draft him? Like, where would I bet on that? It's not. It's still not until it's double digit the, rounds. The late. Well, like I'm fine if you want to take him in like the eighth or round or something. I just won't pay the middle round price for him. I don't think you're going to need to pay a middle round price. I don't think you're going to need to pay an eighth or ninth. By the time the season rolls around, there's going to be uh, question marks surrounding Tyler Higby. There's going to be question marks of was that the real deal? Everett's still involved. Uh, you know. The, they've improved their offensive line, yada, yada, yada. There's going to be a million questions. And there's all these other guys that I think will have more excitement and more surety. You know, the the Jared Cooks of the world will all go ahead Cook, of the but questionable. Cook, Cook will be like a fourth or fifth round guy. He'll be, you know, we always have the top the top tier guys. You have, it'll be Kelsey, George Kittle, and Ertz will probably be in there. They'll, they'll be in the second and the third round. Then you have that. Next tier of tight ends who start going to the fifth round. Last year it was Ingram, OJ well, Howard, and Joku. Like I, I think that Jared Cook will be in that tier of guys. I you're gonna have to pay up if you want him. I will not be in on Higby. Okay, he is not the kind of physical specimen that will demand the ball the way Kelsey Kittle, even a player like Waller, might demand the ball. He's on a team that has weapons that it look, if you run the offense through Higby, he was productive. But he's been a member of this team for quite some time, not having the offense run through him. And yes, maybe the team had some better games. They still didn't make the playoffs in that stretch. They still lost important games in that stretch. Higby is not the kind of player that demands you to run the offense through him. And anytime you're a part of an offense where you could be the fifth option on any given week because you don't demand the ball, Cooks, Woods, Cup, sure. Gurley, I there is not going to be enough hype for me to justify the the investment. All of those outside reasons, of the top 11, 12 rounds. All of those reasons you just laid out is why Higby will one hundred percent be in double digit rounds. His average draft position will not creep into the ninth. He'll be a tenth or later guy, and I will take a shot on him if he is that late. Okay, because it it costs me nothing, you know, and and I'm usually one of those guys that I'm either taking the Kelsey or Kittle early so that I've locked it up, or I'm going to wait for the shot late because I feel like those mid-round, those mid-range guys, uh, I mean, you just brought it up, right? O.J. Howard, Evan Ingram, those mid-range guys is last yeah, year. And they almost and always They didn't pan bust. out. Yeah. Does it concern you that you saw the transition from, like, Everett looked like he was going to be a reliable tight end option, and then poof, he was gone. He looked like he could be emerging, but he didn't put anything together like Tyler Higby did. It, it, and I don't know. Like, I'm just it, the question to me becomes: Is he worth the late round shot? And I think he is. Sure, he'll well, be one of he'll be one of my favorite late round tight ends. If he somehow yeah. is going in the double digits, then I'm then I'll be real excited. Because if they do take the shot, what they did last year, it's like drafting Mark Andrews last year. You're like, sure, you're like, I've seen what he can become. Love the contract. Yeah, yeah, he's he's not going away. And and look at what I mean. It wasn't. It wasn't just oh they started going to him more. It was he was on the field more. Right. They said he is now a well. Everett was injured though. Well, for some of it, not for all of it. Well, just Everett at the very back. end, he came back. Yeah, Everett got back at the end, and it, you know if you look at the the snap percentages for Higby, here's the beginning of the year: fifty one percent, thirty four percent, forty four percent, fifty six, fifty eight. It stays like that the whole year until the last five weeks: ninety one, ninety seven, eighty five, eighty nine, ninety six percent. He became. Uh, a one of the cogs, one of the core pieces of the offense. If he ends up next year being on the field 90 plus percent, I think he's going to be great for fantasy. That's the question that we're asking is, will he be uh, pretty much every down player or not? That's the, it, It's interesting because he's been in the league for four years. Yeah. 
So it, I think he will be one of the more interesting late round. I mean, your your consequence for being wrong if he's in the double digit rounds is not great. So he's he's a player that has shown you upside, but probably won't cost you a lot, like Jason was saying. So why not take the shot? Yeah, he's the Mark Andrews, Darren Waller type from this past year. Yeah, it'd be nice to see them go back to that. Fourth round pick, four years in the league, has the better contract situation, obviously, than Gerald Everett does. Congratulations. You made it to me. Click the subscribe button and see more of me.